everybody. It's Chris the Bad Elf back with another video. And I hope you've got your learning pants on today because what we're gonna be going over is three practical applications for GPS on the job site. So today we're gonna to be covering how to do a stakeout to a known point. We're gonna cover how to shoot topography, create a surface. And then finally, we're gonna shoot some ground control points for our drone. Hope you guys enjoy. This has been Chris the Bad Elf. Stay mappy. Hey guys, Dr. Nick here. I got my learning pants on and we are in beautiful Hondo, Texas. So we're in the heart of Texas, a little bit of, uh, outside of San Antonio, about 25 minutes. Absolutely gorgeous. We're at a uh, green field, undeveloped site here, a little over an acre. We're gonna be practicing a couple things just like Chris was mentioning. We're gonna shoot some topo. We're gonna find some boundaries, find that point of beginning, right? The start of the survey. Also lay down some ground control. Before we get going, just want to show you some of our gear. We've got ground control targets uh, for the drone. We've got a little parrot anafee here, all good to go, FAA regulated. Obviously, we got some uh, lath, we've got nails, we've got ribbon, we got paint, we got learning pants. We're ready to go. Let's go do this thing. Okay, so yeah, let's get into how to do a stakeout. So behind me, you'll see that we have the battle flex set up over some flagging. What that is, is that's the, the point of beginning for the entire survey. So what that means is that whenever the surveyor came out here and did his map that we based all of this off of, that was his point of beginning. And then everything else was calculated using a survey resection, which means that from point to point, based off the origin, he's calculating the distance and the bearing uh, from the origin. So. Using that, we were able to recreate the lot inside of AutoCAD, and uh, we're using it as reference today uh, to collect these points. And we were also able to, pace, to place all of the boundary points for the utility easement, drainage, uh, lot corners, all of that uh, based off of that surveyor's map, which you'll see on screen now. Uh, but let's get into how to do a stakeout. So how did we actually discover this point? How did we find it? And how did we set up against it in the field? Well, the first step was getting those coordinates. They were inside of NAD83, and they were on the original map. Uh, what we did from there is we put them into the Battle Flex app as one of our stored locations. And then from there, we were able to guide ourselves to this location. Once we were within about a meter, uh, we turned on our deviation plot, which is a really helpful tool for setting up against known points because it allows you to set your plot center as that known point. So once you have that plot center set as that known point, it's going to tell you how far in the X and Y you are off from that coordinate. So you'll see that deviation plot on screen now, but pretty quickly within setting up on it and getting level and making sure we were on that rebar, we're within a fraction of a centimeter in the horizontal, which is very good. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a timed point over a minute. It's going to average that location value, average that position, and it's going to give us the best possible value. So let's go ahead and cook that point and uh, we'll have that recorded. And then from then on, we're going to go ahead and stake out the rest of the points down until we get to uh, the actual property corner for lot 10. Uh, which will be the site of the main survey. I hope that that was insightful, uh, but if you do want to go into a bit more detail, uh, check out the video in, in the top right corner right now, in, in the top right corner right now, because that's going to be uh, how to set up against an NGS benchmark, and we're going to go into a little bit more nuance about uh, known points and survey monuments. All right, everybody, so right now we're actually trying to take a point at the border of this easement. Uh, typically, uh, at known points by surveyors, you're gonna find rebar and things like that to set up on, but we just found this post. So what are you gonna do if you have a two meter survey pole uh, with a GNSS on top? You're not gonna go ahead and put it on like there. No, no, we're not gonna do that. Uh, that's we're... crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna adjust our antenna height inside of the app and set it to the same length as this, which is about 36 inches. So you'll see that on screen now, but what I'm gonna do after that, just put the flex right on it and then go ahead and take the point. And that's gonna allow me to have uh, the border of this easement with relatively high accuracy. That's so smart. Even. All right, we're at the stage where we need to set some ground control. We've been surveying this one acre property for the last few hours. 
We've set property uh, corner uh, stakes. We've set easements. We've shot all the utilities in, including electrical and septic. We found the point of beginning. So what you can see here is I'm now about to set up ground control targets. With this property, because it's a pretty big basic square or polygon, we're gonna put a target in each of the four corners and one in the middle of the property. Keeping in mind, we want equidistances from the targets. The reason for this is when the data are processed in our photogrammetry software in the office, the worst data accuracy wise, so the point cloud that it creates, the, inevitably the contours, the imagery, that worst point in the data set will be the furthest points from our control. The other thing to keep in mind is we've shot a lot of elevation shots. We call this blind control. That way in the office, we don't use those points to process the drone data, but we check those points against the drone data to make sure that the data line up. Never ever assume that the data are gonna work out. Last thing I'm gonna mention is it's a little windy, maybe not the best conducive you know, environment for drones, but we'll get her done. Make sure too that your uh, target doesn't fly away. All right, here we go, we're gonna go flying. All right, we're about to put the bird in the air. We've got everything loaded in to fix 4D. Hold on to your butts. Let's go, buddy. Alright, drone check off list. And here we go. So, Alright, we are mid-flight right now, so we are on the seventh transect. You can actually see the drone traversing the site right now. We're flying at roughly 200 feet above the earth of the uh, above the, the surface of the earth, so well below the 400 feet established uh, airspace by the FAA. Uh, we have the drone set to be collecting a 75% overlap, both horizontally and vertically. So uh, basically, in front and on the side. That way, our photos have enough overlap that we can create a really, really good ortho mosaic, but also to interpolate a three-dimensional point cloud, which will have AutoCAD uh, contour derivatives. Um, we are basically just monitoring the bird in uh, FAA speak. I'm what's called the PIC or the pilot in command. Uh, Chris the Bad Elf is here with me, obviously. He's our observer, so we're both actively maintaining visual communication with the drone, looking, making sure that there are no raptors, aka birds around. We want to make sure that uh, we're not flying in and out of different types of cloud, you know, coverage. The idea here is to make it as safe as possible. Lastly, we're out in a barren area. There are no people we're flying over, so always, always, always safety first. Last thing I'm gonna mention is we're almost done here uh, with our drone flight. When your battery gets low, I always recommend at about 15 to 20% battery life because they're lithium ion batteries usually. Bring that bird home, never worth the risk. Get it home safe. Thanks guys. All right, everybody. So now for the final part of the video, we're just gonna shoot this blind control uh, for the drone, right? So this is gonna be some spot elevations uh, in this ditch right here. Uh, also in this ditch along that side of the property as well. And then a couple spots uh, actually inside of the lot. So this is gonna help us check the validity of the data collected by the drone, the point cloud that it generates. So uh, the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take evenly spaced steps. Uh, I'm gonna take about probably 20 steps between each point inside of the ditches. And then for the lot, I'm gonna take just a couple points. And uh, these are gonna be 20 paces uh, divided inside of a grid. So yeah, let's get to it. Let's create a great data set. And I really can't wait to show you guys the finished product for all of this. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're in the office today and we finished analyzing the data, drawing our map and creating some of the final deliverables. So what I wanted to do was go over uh, what this process looked like and some of the details that we were able to capture about the site. Now, this is just the raw data. So you're going to see all the topo shots as well as some of the individual points for ground control utilities and other things of that nature. Uh, if we go to this next tab, we can see what the actual property looked like. So this is the entire map. That's 24 by 36, meant to be printed out on a plot. Uh, obviously in the computer, it's gonna look a little bit weird. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And here you can see we've got some pretty neat topo right here. We've got some pretty tidy lines. And we were able to mark uh, 
the easement. We were able to mark the offset for uh, the easement on all sides. So 32 feet on the north, 25 on the east and south side, and that is going to be that ditch right there. So you're not supposed to build in there, so it's very important to mark. But other than that, we also got the edge of pavement, which we were able to use as a brake line uh, to help tidy up this topo. We also used the top of this property line as a brake line uh, to help tidy that up. And everything is looking really nice. We have some labels here. As you can see up here on the top of the hill, it's going to be 985 feet of elevation. As you get to the bottom of the trench, uh, you're hitting 979 and then you rise back up again for 983, which is pretty regular throughout the rest of the lot uh, with a little bit of uh, elevation rise right here and right here, 984, 985. And also we were able to put the approximate location of the house. So uh, it was really important that everything kind of lined up and made sense. So uh, we didn't want to be over the septic because that's obviously not going to work. Uh, driveway will likely go right here so that you can get to the garage from the back. But all this data, uh, although it can be used authoritatively since we're not professional land surveyors, uh, it's going to come in handy for the owner whenever they're thinking of designing uh, how to build their house and where to put everything. Uh, so it was really important that we went out there and we flagged it for them. Uh, we were able to get all these nice measurements and put everything into perspective for them. Now, this is not the only final map. Uh, if I just go ahead right here, we can see uh, the final map, including the drone imagery. As you can see, there is some pretty high res imagery here and it looks really nice. Uh, we're able to see that that our easements, everything's lining up, our, our contours are lining up for the, for the ditches and everything came out really nicely. So uh, one thing to note is that we had one ground control point right here. That's the one that we showed you in the video. Another one down here, two more right here and then one last one right here. So covered the site pretty well. Um, but again, one thing to note that's of uh, exceptional importance is uh, this disclaimer at the bottom. Uh, this is not a certified land survey. It's intended for research purposes only and is not admissible in court. Professional land surveyors take on a lot of responsibility whenever they stamp something with their name and uh, we are not certified professional land surveyors so we have to make that very clear. Uh, this is only for research purposes but other than that we can see the legend. Uh, all of our uh, utilities and assets and lines are marked clearly. Uh, we also have uh, what equipment we use to map with and then finally a little inset map uh, of the outer location scale bar north arrow pretty standard stuff but please uh, feel free to let us know what you think uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments and uh, we'd love to generate some good discussion on this but thanks for sticking around let's go ahead and head back to the site to say our goodbyes thanks guys so that was a great excuse to get out in the field again. I know I was happy to get out of the office and uh, well, we learned a lot. Uh, we were able to stake out to our known point. We were able to create our surface uh, for Topo. And then we were also able to fly the drone. I had a lot of fun doing it. Nick, do you have any closing remarks? I'm just glad we didn't wreck the drone and uh, we're not gonna get fired. And I think I just heard the taco truck. Taco truck's here! Stay mappy, guys. <laughs>